decide, decide to change my mind. God will show me how. Love is my decision, my decision right here and now. Love is my decision, my decision. decision. No one else can make me forget. Once I decide to change my mind, God will show me how. Love is my decision, my decision right here and Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the Heart of Las Cruces. And Bonnie told me to just start singing, and you guys would know what to do, but maybe not if she's not here. So <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, it's a great morning, and everything is perfect just the way it is. So yeah, welcome. Um, I'm Sarah Benson, and this is my husband, Doug. And we're going to do one more song, and then other stuff. <laughs> uh, Love myself the way I am. There's nothing I need to change. I'll always be the perfect me. There's nothing to rearrange. I'm beautiful and capable of being the best me I can. And I love myself just the way I am. You the way you are, there's nothing you need to do. When I feel the love inside myself, it's easy to love you. Behind your fears, your raging tears, I see your shining star, and I love you just the way you are. Love the world the way it is, cause I can clearly see that all the things the judge are done by people just like me. So till the birth of peace on earth that only love can bring, I'll help it grow by loving everything. Love myself the way I am, and still I want to grow. The change outside can only come when deep inside I know. I'm beautiful and capable of being the best me I can, and I love myself just the way I am. Just the way I am. Good morning. Yes, please take a seat. 
What a great crowd we have today. I am thrilled with all of you. <laughs> we all win. Uh, I'm Judy Hunt, the, your practitioner in service today. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the Heart of Las Cruces, where our goal, our vision is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. And how am I carrying? Everybody getting me good? Okay, great, thank you. Um, welcome to anyone visiting for the first time. I think I see some new faces. I'm not going to point you out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we have nice visitor packets for people, and so be sure and pick one up there at each door, and they include a gift certificate for the bookstore, so it's, it's a good thing. And there's a form in that to get on our email letter list, and that tells you everything that's going on in this busy place. So it's, and Bonnie has put in big letters, be sure to read the newsletter for all of you regulars. Uh, and be sure to read the bulletin board next to where the name tags are hung. Uh, they are showing ideas that have been generated through visioning and the action committee meetings. So if one calls to you, put your name on it, and you can begin putting these visions into action. We all have power. Our board meeting time has been changed to December 20th at 1130. Please let us know if you would like to attend. All board meetings are available to all of us. Uh, we, so some changes in service for our December services because of the funny days the holiday falls on. December 24th, we will have our Christmas Eve day service because the 24th is a Sunday. That's our usual service, but we will do it joined with Unity at 10 a.m. and no evening service. So 10 a.m. next Sunday. That's right. We're there. Okay, and the following Sunday is New Year's Eve day, and that's an awesome opportunity. We gather here in the sanctuary at 5 a.m. That is our designated hour of prayer for peace. Everywhere around the world, people gather at that exact hour and pray for peace and meditation. And it's also available via Zoom if you want to stay in bed and participate, which is a pretty swell option. <laughs> it is really fun to be here, and we go to the Village Inn for breakfast after, so it is fun. Oh, and then we're going to come back to church at 9 a.m., join with unity again, but this is, this is a wonderful service where we do the burning bowl process, and so if there's anything from last year you're ready to let go of, this is an awesome ceremony, so really welcome you, but that, try to mark your calendar or check the newsletter, 9 a.m., so next Sunday's 10 a.m., Sunday after that is 9 a.m., we're just trying to keep you on your toes. Uh, January 7th, we'll go back to our usual time. Oh, and after the service, Reverend Bonnie will lead a visioning for anyone wanting to vision their year of 2024. And I don't know if you've done visioning, but it's an awesome meditational prayer experience, and it's, it's just wonderful. If all you get is peace, it's worth showing up. Uh, here at Center for Spiritual Living, we believe in the power of prayer. And we call it spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. We have prayer requests on the back of all the chairs and pens. So if there's anything that you would like to add to our list, please do that. We meet as a group. It's all four new thought uh, um, churches. What? Centers <laughs> in Las Cruces. We have four. So we gather the practitioners. It's a good group. And we pray with you on those things you want action on. So, And we'll do it for two weeks. You're on that list. So please feel free to add yourself. And if there's anything that is on your heart today and you'd like a quick treatment, Bob and I are available to do that with you after service. So... Leave here with a lighter heart. Uh, now, oh, and gratitude cards. 
when you see spirit working in your life and answering that prayer, please fill out the gratitude card and we will pray on that and just amplify it. So do that. Thank you. Um, now it is time for song, silence, and prayer. close our eyes now and go into prayer in that light of love that we know that we are always standing in the flow of spirit's love and that love is around us and through us flowing generously ceaselessly always with the love and the joy and the peace and the guidance that is our true nature and we feel that now in this beautiful place with all of these wonderful people. We feel spirit moving in and through us. And the love and the gratitude flows with such ease because that is our true nature. It is who we really are. I am so grateful for this time. And we say together, and so it is. The reading today is from Ernest Holmes' Creative Ideas, A Spiritual Compass for Personal Expression. Sweet little book, has a little thing he says, and then a lovely meditation. Really recommend it. This one is called, I Am Calm and Peaceful. And from Malachi, it, it quotes, For I am the Lord, I change not. All the great scriptures have taught one identical message, the unity of good. All the sacred books have been inspired by the one mind. Each in its own tongue has told the story of reality. Quote, I am the Lord, I change not. Quote, God is in itself, by itself, full and perfect. If we can add to this glorified concept the realization that this divine being is the breath of our breath, omnipresent, forever within us, then we shall realize that we live in the eternal and perfect mind. This means that while we live in the eternal God who does not change, we are forever drawing from it the possibility of manifold expressions which make living interesting. And so it is. I have the ple do we sing now or we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing. <laughs> okay. This is a song that uh, 
is written by Mark Altrog. It's called I Stand in Awe of You. And typically this song is sung in worship to God vertically. But today, because you are the beloved and in this theme of oneness and wholeness, it applies to you as well. So Sarah and I are going to sing it to one another, but we're also going to be singing it to you as well. Beautiful beyond description. said <laughs> that was awesome thank you thank you for that gift well I have the pleasure of introducing a man I consider a friend of mine Reverend Bram Watkins uh, he, I've got his bio here so you'll get all the facts um, and while I I'm gonna blow my nose <laughs> that was awesome thank you Reverend Watkins has an MBA from the American Graduate School of International Management in Phoenix, a BA in Spanish from the University of New Mexico, 
a master practitioner degree in neuro-linguistic programming from NLP Learning Systems in Dallas, and is an ordained interfaith minister by One Spirit Interfaith Seminary in New York. Reverend Watkins is a student of the Science of Mind, Unity Teachings, and Pranic Healing. He has served as guest speaker over the past 17 years at local churches in El Paso and Las Cruces. For his complete bio, there's even more, please see the newsletter. We are so grateful to welcome him back to our platform. So that's a little outdated because uh, next June will make 20 years that I've been doing this. 20 years. My mom asked me, she said, where are you preaching tomorrow? And I said, Dorothy's Church, for those of you all that remember Dorothy. Um, first of all, namaste. For the newcomers, you're going to love the next two hours. Just sit back and... <laughs> So my, my talk today, as I look to see what time it is and not make sure we don't go over the two hours, is um, called Living Wholeness Through Peace. So Reverend Bonnie texted me a while back and she said, hey, remember, you're, you're speaking on the, the 17th. And she said, before you ask me, I have no idea what living wholeness means. I said, all right. So I decided to look it up. I actually looked in the dictionary. And this is the definition of wholeness. It says, Health or well-being in body, mind, soul, and spirit. I didn't realize the dictionary used words like that. It also says the state or condition of being in one piece without separation. So I like that, without separation, because one of the things I work on is that we're all one. You know, I, I, I try to get there, but then I see some of the things that are going on in the world, and I'm like, how does that actually work? So living wholeness through peace. First thing I think about is what do I need to do to get my mind right? We all know that thoughts held in, in, in your mind produce of their kind. You know, what you think about, you're going to bring about. So I pay attention to what I'm thinking about, or most of the time I do. And then I think about, I think that's an aspect of living wholeness. But then I ask myself, well, when am I not whole? And for me, it's when I lack peace of mind. You know, if you offered me fame, fortune, better looks than I already have, which would be easy to do. Um, I, I wouldn't take any of that stuff because without peace of mind, I don't have anything. So if I could have anything, it would be peace of mind. So how do we, how do we find wholeness through peace of mind? Again, for me, the first thing is being focused on what do we want to create in our lives? I think we need to realize that, that what we focused on, we're going to manifest. So I choose to focus on health, love, grace, peace, abundance, harmony. And that's all fine and dandy, but it doesn't always work out that way. About, about a week and a half ago, I came back into the office right after Thanksgiving, and we were expecting a very, very large payment. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a commercial roofer. And we were expecting a very large payment from one of our general contractors. So think large. Multiply it times 10 and then double it. And we're about in the range of what this large check that we were due to have that week. And it didn't come in. And I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, I immediately went to, mm, you know, what are we going to do? How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to take care of things? And then I figured, all right, Brambo, you better get your mind right. You better settle down and think about what you want to create. So you do have to put feet to your prayers, though. So I had to make a few phone calls. Where's my check? Where's my money? Oh, don't worry. You'll get paid within a week of when we get paid from the owner. And that's in the contract. So I, I get it. So I had to decide how I was going to spend the next week or so hoping that we were going to get paid. First thing I did was called my banker up here in, in Las Cruces and tapped our entire line of credit, the entire thing, hoping that that would be enough to last a week or so or two to, to pay all of our bills. But then throughout the week, every time this came up, I said, all right, what are you going to do with it? And I just gave thanks over and over that the payment would be received in divine timing and that all would be in divine order. That's how I chose to give my energy. 
By Friday last week, we got a phone call that said, hey, we're going to wire this money into your account this next week. And thank you, thank you, thank you, God. It all came in. Now, but I had a choice. I had a choice to make, to live in fear or live in faith. And I think most of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is your choice. What are you going to do with that? Are we going to choose to be peaceful? Will love be our decision that we sang earlier? So getting to peace of mind, that's keeping my mind right, thinking about things I want to create. But then I have to ask myself, how do I stay there? And for me, I think of the word atonement or at one minute. I have to become one with the situation, whether I like it or not. And, and for me, that's a hard thing to do since I've spent most of my 59 and a half years thinking that I'm in control of things. <laughs> Anybody that's got married or have kids quickly figure out that you're not in control of things. <laughs> and, and I just, I, I don't have to be in control of everything. But when I become one with the situation and realize that I don't have to control it all, I can relax, take a deep breath, let go, let God, we've all done that. And then things get easier. When I figure out that I'm not in charge of everything, I choose to be at one with God. I choose to be at one with the universe because then all the goodness from God in the universe is present for me. And again, Choosing faith, choosing love, choosing peace of mind, harmony, balance, forgiveness, joy. Gretchen, we were talking about forgiveness earlier. She received a wonderful gift this last week. Those, those are the choices we make. So whenever I find myself resisting <laughs> the situation, again, it only makes it worse. Worse. If you're worrying about something, you're planning a future event that you don't want to have happen. You know, that's what worrying is. Where are we going to give our energy? Now, I, I, when bad things happen or challenging things, issues that come up, for me, I, I say focus on it for a while. Pay attention. Wallow in it. Get it all over you. Because for me, I either created it, co-created it, or at a minimum, I allowed it through my thought process and my energy. So I think it's time to, okay, what is this that's presenting something to me? Because I know it's here to teach me something. Not quite sure what it is, but then after that, then I can pivot and focus and see it how I want it to be. I mean, even Einstein said that the protons, neutrons, electrons of the problem are very different from the ones of the solution. And I guarantee you that we will not find the solution as long as we're focused on the problem. I, I know that just as sure as I'm standing here. Again, what is our choice? What are we going to do with the situation that we've been presented with. I lost my peace of mind. <laughs> I know this is hard for y'all to believe, a redheaded Leo with former anger issues. I lost my peace of mind a couple of weeks ago. Uh, my beautiful wife, Brandy, called me from her home in Fort Lauderdale and said, sweetheart, I'm not going to be able to make it back for the big event that we've been planning all year to go to this wonderful event we go to every year. It's a, it, it, it may sound trivial, but it's a, it's a black tie event that we go to in El Paso with a bunch of friends. And it's a, just a, a fantastic time. Her, her daughter's um, recital got moved. There's, there's this thing in Florida called rain. I know we haven't seen any here in a, in a long time. But it rained so much there that it flooded out the studio where they were going to have their, their dance. So it got moved. Long story short, Brandy wasn't able to come. She needed to be there with her daughter. That makes sense. But for me, all it was was just another example of how difficult it is being married and living in di different cities. So everybody ready? Cue the pity party. Because <laughs> that's what it was for a while. But I, I finally had to just, you know, I had to let that go as well. Reagan's 12. She's beautiful. She's amazing. I insist that her mom be with her. I, I don't think I would want to be with a person that didn't put their child first. Y'all remind me of that when I get sideways sometimes. But I, I just, um, you know, I, it, it was important that, that, that she be there with her. And as much as I started thinking about it over the next week or two, wasn't quite sure what we'd do, I just had to hallucinate that all would be well and just let it go. And then a few days later, a, a very close family friend of ours, actually the folks that introduced us, called and said, hey, kids, we're going to a black tie event this Saturday night. Why don't you all come with us? Which was last night. And we had a blast. 
So everybody got what they wanted, but I don't think I would have gotten what I wanted had I just focused on being upset or what I don't have or my ego and my own emotions. So take back the pity party because it all worked out. So again, staying focused on what I want, trying to be at one with the situation even when it's not what I want. And then what's the next thing that I do for my peace of mind? Gratitude. Living wholeness comes from a state of profound gratitude. When you're grateful for everything, life gives you more to be grateful for. We realize that everything comes from the one true source. Gratitude gives me more to be grateful for. And I remember something that Colin Powell said, I believe that gratitude is a force multiplier. It's like compound interest, folks. The more you're, gra the more you're grateful, the more you have to be grateful for. So as I was preparing for the message today and reading through the Science of Mind magazine this last month, and I went through it cover to cover. It was fantastic. There was an article in there by a lady named Carol Burbank, and I want to read you a quote that she put in. She said, as spiritually inclined people, we prefer wholeness over separation. Alignment with the divine frames our path forward. What is holy is, by nature, whole, right? And she says, well, maybe yes, maybe no. In unity with the divine, our souls are always whole, but at the same time, our journeys are through a complex world. We are spiritual beings in a physical expression, and we have the poop that we have to deal with sometimes, those challenges, the issues, the things that comes up, the things that come up. And when we have not healed our wounds from the past, then those things can continue to come up. That's why maybe not all things that are holy are always whole. We're given these opportunities, these platinum, not a silver platter, but a platinum platter. Here, deal with me, is what she's talking about. So, and we, we have to heal from these things. She says, can we live in wholeness even when it hurts? And a quote that I found says, Jalaja Bonheim states, we achieve true wholeness only by embracing our fragility and sometimes our brokenness. Ernest Holmes goes on to say, humans will deliver themselves from sickness and trouble in exact proportion to their discovery of themselves and their true relationship to the whole. See, this unresolved trauma creates toxic relationships, creates toxic culture. And I, I think back to unresolved issues, um, emotional issues that I've had. And I told myself years ago that I really wanted to work on these things just so that I could attract healthier relationships into my own life. When we distrust, distrust connection, by conforming to habitual and reactive hurtful limitations is when we just create more problems for ourselves. Codependency. It's an unconscious reactivity that separates us from one another. And I, I remember I got together with a couple of girlfriends many years ago, and I was telling them about a date that I'd been on earlier in the week. And I said, you know, this person is amazing, but I just don't see much of a, a future for us or anything. And then I had to start dodging the punches. And there's like, well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with her. There's nothing for you to fix. She doesn't need to be rescued. It's like, poof, poof, poof. And I was like, oh, my God. And uh, that's when I started learning about codependency <laughs> and started learning that you can only attract into your life who you are and what you are, how you are. So I really had to start working on me and changing me from the inside out so that I could attract this beautiful, amazing soul that I have in my life now, that I had to change. Anytime I've looked to the exterior for change, it doesn't work. It has to come through us. God can only do for us what God can do through us is, is my thought process. If I wanted a healthy relationship, I needed to be healthier and whole. Healing always moves towards wholeness through alignment with spirit. You know, that I think we've all heard that, that statement, don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry. Well, I take it a step further. Don't go looking for a new relationship until you've worked on the issues from the past one. We are, we are our own common denominator. We take us with us wherever we go. So... This next thing that I'm going to talk about here, <clears throat> love is my decision. That's what we sang earlier. That's what I work on. Now, again, I say issues come up, focus on them for a little bit, try not to ruminate too long. 
folks, I, I can't even watch the news anymore. I try to watch a little bit of it just so I'm aware of what's going on out there. But when I see what's going on between Hamas and Israel and what's going on over in the West Bank and Gaza, I get so flippin' angry that I want to wipe, wipe evil off the planet. I get viscerally upset. And then I think to myself, Brambo, <laughs> you know, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're only going to keep getting the same response, the same answer. You know, if I practice what I preach, I need to think differently. I need to be differently. I need to develop a, a peaceful mentality. I, I think I'm real because I'm in a physical expression right now, and I hear about those horrible things that happen. That, that freaks me out. I don't like any of that stuff. So I, I, I feel like I, I have to, to change things. It says, peace is the divine attribute that prevails in a world where strife and conflict can be observed with too much regularity. We affirm peace by embracing the principle of wholeness. Accepting divine presence dwells wholly within us. And not to do that is only going to confirm that we're going to get more of the same. There was another article by Jafon Seeley in the Science of Mind this, this month. It says, there is nothing that exists outside the whole. If we're rooted firmly in that realization of wholeness, would there be any limit to the peace we could achieve and the impact we could make? He says, the greatest tragedy and the source of the problems we face stems from the unwillingness to live is to live from a place of wholeness. I, I just don't get it sometimes, but I'm, I try to be at one with that other thought process. We, when we live from this space of wholeness and don't slip into forgetfulness, we begin to see the, that wholeness transcend space and time. Living wholeness does not require us to meditate for days on end or pray in a certain way, for we are already whole. Therefore, living our wholeness is predicated on our ability to embrace it within ourselves. Even the appearance of separation, we are still in and of the one. I was happy to hear by listening to Reverend Bonnie that she's not the only one that has an interesting family. <laughs> she said that uh, there's people in her own family that don't even talk. And uh, as much as I'm grateful for Facebook and, and the things that, you know, being able to watch friends and family and see stuff that you don't normally see, I think I've finally eliminated enough people that talk about politics or other things because that's just not where I want to get my information. But, you know, I, I, our, our family, there's, there's a couple of folks that um, are not as perfect as me and don't think the way I do. And, but I, I think that it's, you know, if we, if we want peace, we must really desire it and not just talk about it. You know, I, I remember when I was trying so hard to get into grad school a long, long time ago, I had a desire to learn how other people think and other cultures are. That's why I went to graduate school at an international school where there was 92 countries represented. When I wanted to get into seminary school, I wanted, I know how I think, and it's, you know, I'd love to tell you that it's perfect and it's right, but it's not. I wanted to learn how other people think so I could bounce my ideas off of theirs. And so I went to One Spirit where we studied every religion I'd ever heard of, and oh my goodness, some that I had never heard of. Because that puts me in a position to see, well, what else can be true? How else can spirit represent itself to me that I haven't been exposed to? And again, I've done this a million times. It's a, it's a bicycle wheel. And every single one of those spokes is an ism <laughs> that's going towards the one true truth, the hub of the wheel where there's no movement. When we finally make up our minds and we... And we We've come to a decision. I find, for me, that all I look for after that are things that prove my point. Rarely did I ever look for, well, I've made up my mind here. I'm going to go out and search and research ways to prove myself wrong. Nobody really thinks like that. I wish we did more of that. But it, it took me studying Hinduism in seminary school to forgive my anger, my ignorance, my judgment of Catholicism. Because I knew Catholicism was, was uh, not monotheistic, <laughs> you know, and I thought, well, Hinduism can't be because they pray to all the, the, you know, gods and goddesses and saints and stuff is one thing, but to animals, ooh, that's freaky, you know, that, that can't be, God, was I wrong. 
But it was in studying Hinduism that allowed me to see Catholicism in a different light and quit reinforcing my own thought process, which was wrong. You know, true Catholics know that you don't pray to the saint. They're just a, a guidepost saying that's the way to go. This is the way, my friend. You know, the, the, the readings in the Science of Mind this month are, are fantastic. And there's a, there's a great quote in there from Margaret Wheatley that says, When we seek connection, we restore the world to wholeness. Our seemingly separate lives become meaningful as we discover how truly necessary we are to each other. There must be connection. We can't do this on our own. In being aware of our wholeness, Ernest Holmes states, all human endeavor is an attempt to get back to first principles, to find such an inward wholeness that all sense of fear, doubt, and uncertainty vanishes. The more I learn to let go and let God, the, the, the better off I am. I'm, again, I've, I've said I'm not sure why I have this thought process that I need to control and that I'm responsible for everything. I remember delivering a message right here many years ago. And I was really stressed about being able to make payroll. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> really stressed about how I was going to keep the company running. Really stressed about how I was going to provide for my employees and their families. And at the end of the message, standing back by the, the, the door there, it's like we always do. And this woman came up to me and she said, who died and made you God? <laughs> and I'm like... Uh, let, let me check. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, wow, she's right. And she said, Bram, those aren't your problems. You need to hand that over. Those problems belong to the universe. You're not that important, Bubba. You need to get out of your own way. And I was like, gosh, what, a, what an amazing gift she gave me. You know, where is my faith? In my source or in my fear? My daughter Brenda reminds me, Dad, God is your business partner, your CSO, your chief spiritual officer. Please remember that. You don't have to do it all on your own. Now, I don't think that we have to be consciously aware of all the specifics to our wholeness, but I do think we need to realize that everything that we need already exists within us. There's a quote that I read um, earlier this week about Jesus and how profound an example of living wholeness that he is. In John chapter 10, verse 34, Jesus says, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. In asking this question, Jesus declares that all people are perfect, whole, and complete, just the way we are. Our challenge is to live according to this understanding. Gary Zukov says, The journey to wholeness requires that you look honestly, openly, with courage into yourself, into the dynamics that lie behind what you feel, what you perceive, what you value, and how you act. What about wholeness? What about that four other that, that four-letter word that we use, love? What about wholeness of love? Where does that fit in? And Tara Brock states, On this sacred path of radical acceptance, rather than striving for perfection, we discover how to love ourselves into wholeness. Plato said, love is the name for our pursuit of wholeness, for our desire to be complete. So when we disagree with folks, when I see the news and I get upset, when a soccer mom in her van cuts me off for the 10th time during the day, how do we react? Y'all know if I've been meditating or not. <laughs> All depends if I'm waving with five fingers or not. <laughs> and I haven't been doing so well lately, but I'm, I'm working on it. How do we respond? When somebody upsets us, loving kindness, or do we judge and condemn? And I came across this short quote, I think of it more of a, um, a poem by Edwin Markham. It says, he drew a circle that shut me out, heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that drew him in. Love is always the answer. Love's always the answer. Reverend Bonnie talked about the differences that the family members face around the holidays from what food we're going to make. My mom doesn't like brandy making Brussels sprouts at the house because it stinks it up, she says. Or I don't know if anybody in your family, did you have to sit at the little kid's table? You know, those years before you were old enough and even when you were old enough to do any of these decisions bring about more love is what she talked about. My beautiful wife, Brandy, and I have been together now for a little over five and a half years, not quite six years. 
and we just celebrated our fourth wedding anniversary just a couple of weeks ago. And I often tell her that I love her. And more often than not, when she responds, she'll say, I love you more. And I thought, well, how does she know that? And it took about two years for me to finally get aggravated enough. <laughs> and I finally said, how do you know you love me more than I love you? And she said, sweetheart, I don't love you more than you love me. I love you more than any problem we're ever going to face. I love you more than any challenge we're ever going to come up against. I love you more than the bad stuff that we're going to encounter. I apologize for the bad stuff. She loves me more. Love is always the answer. Remember that definition of wholeness I gave you about two hours ago? The wellness of being in body, mind, soul, and spirit. Listen to this quote from Deepak Chopra that reminds us, joy is a return to the deep harmony of body, mind, and spirit that was yours at birth and can be yours again. That openness to love, the capacity for wholeness with the world around you is still within you. See, the spiritual law of wholeness is within us. We are so one with the whole that what is true of the whole is also true of us. But again, it's always a choice. How are we going to resp- are we going to react? Or are we going to respond? Nothing is thrust upon us. We always have a choice, moment to moment. Each of us gets to choose wholeness over limitation. And the last expression of wholeness that I'll talk about today is purpose. What is our purpose? It's a great quote I love from Mark Twain that says, "What are the two most important days of your life?" It says the day you were born and the day you figure out why. What is your purpose? I'm borrowing my new definition of purpose through the readings that I found in the Science of Mind magazine this month. It says, my own purpose is to reveal and release the power of divine presence wherever I am and in whatever I do. I love that. What is your purpose? And the last quote I'm going to leave with you is, from Maya Angelou, who I was blessed to meet twice. She says, you don't need another person, place, or thing to make you whole. God already did that. Your job is to know it. And so it is. Oh, wow. Thank you, Reverend Bram. Awesome. Doesn't he hit the spot? Yes. yes. And I love how he how he terrorizes with the two hour thing first. <laughs> Makes everything flow better once you realize he's just joshing you. But you can, I can just picture the panic. Like, I, I, we have visitors like, wait, I didn't sign up for two hours. Ah. So now is the time when we consider giving back to the center where all of these wonderful things happen. That's what I thought. Good, you get up. <laughs> okay, we have a song. <laughs> So uh, this is Mason Hooley, and um, he did a song for Unity, and I heard such rave reviews that I invited him to sing for us, too. (laughs) So he'll tell you about the song and a little about himself. Yeah, so my name's Mason. I grew up here. I'm from, I grew up here. I'm from Crucis. I just got back from school up in Chicago. I'll be going to D.C. soon, so I'm glad that I got a second chance to perform in this I'm, I'm glad I got a second chance to perform in this space while I'm still here. I'm going to D.C. soon. That was the part that you missed. Um, this piece is Panis Angelicus. It's a sacred text that was set in the 1800s. And one of the themes of the piece is 
the nourishment that comes from being one with the spirit. Thank you for that gift. Thank you, Sarah, for making sure we got that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we weren't going to miss we that. We needed that. <laughs> Everybody needs that. That's awesome. So in the spirit of the gratitude which he has just generated, now is the time to give back to the center where all these wonderful things happen. It's things like that and Bram. Uh, our tithe recipient, this um, we have two of them this month. We are sharing, we give 10% of everything we collect. And they, this is the Moose Lodge, which is generous enough to offer us parking on Sunday, which is very nice. And we are supporting their charities to both Moose, Moose Heart Child City and School and Moose Haven Senior Living Community through many services and initiatives that enhance the lives of those in their care. And also the Las Cruces Rio Grande Rotary Foundation's Dress the Child is to provide new clothing and shoes for children in need in our county. Many of these children have never had new clothes and have ha never had the opportunity to shop for clothes that might be appealing to them. So actually get to choose your clothes. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, 
we have offering plates at both doors. We don't pass the basket anymore, so feel free. And uh, now we do our blessing. Do we sing? Do we? No, no, no. We I sing first, or? No, I clicked one too many. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, that's what I. That's what I thought. Okay, and so we read together. Divine love, love through, through me, me blesses, blesses and, and multiplies all, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. receive. Thank and you, God, God in me. And now we sing our lovely song, I Am So Blessed, that I try to keep in my mind all week long. So, please. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so blessed. So grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Thank you. What a wonderful time. Now we will stand and sing our closing song with lots of energy and joy as we go out into the world. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do Go Out and Shine.